So where does one word end and another begin? And there's a few different like methodologies that people have used to try and create word boundaries. Um, one is semantic boundaries. So there's this idea called minimal free forms. Um, and it was a concept that was introduced by this dude, Leonard, Leonard Bloomfield in 1926. And basically this concept, minimal free forms, says that a word is the smallest meaningful unit of speech that can stand by itself. I feel like that there's counterexamples to this, and people have pointed out that there are counterexamples to this. Do you think you could give an example of counterexample? The smallest meaningful unit of speech. That can stand by itself. That can stand by itself. Well, because I feel like um, the stand by itself thing. That, that's what really it might be throw like you. Yeah. Because the, sm- and the, smallest meaning, the smallest meaningful unit of speech that can't stand by itself, or can't necessarily stand by itself, that's called a morpheme. And I'm gonna have a whole lot to say about morphemes and morphology later. <laughs> So when I, when I said unbreakable earlier, un, break, and able, those are all morphemes that are combined to form the word unbreakable. Got it. Yeah. Um, but not all morphemes can stand on their own, which is where this minimal free form definition comes in. I'm so confused. Okay, so um, basically a morpheme um, can be either free, um, which means it can be a word on its own mm-hmm. or in combination with other words, or it can be bound. So a bound morpheme is, it has to be tied to another word or else it um, can't exist on its own. So like break in unbreakable can exist on its own, that's why it's free. But exactly. Oh, you're such a smart bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but un can't exist on its own. Yes. It, it's a prefix to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you wouldn't, is, you wouldn't say like, I wouldn't say like, I'm, I'm talking at a party, like, Hey, like trying to be intellectual, like and philosophical. Hey, have you ever considered like the concept of un? And you'd be like, oh, you mean have I ever considered the concept of negativity? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that one would be bound. Yes. Like bound morpheme. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the minimal free form is that a word like break um can exist on its own. So it's like a morpheme that can like can float around. But what's know? the difference between a morpheme and a and a word? Morphemes can form words, and they can be words on their own, but they're just the smallest meaningful unit of speech, kind of like an atom's like the smallest, or like often considered the smallest unit of matter. A quark is the smallest unit of matter, but good try. Shh. <laughs> it's an analogy. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't make sense. Okay, quark is the smallest unit of matter. Thank you. Whatever. Okay. I think I just (laughs) tipped. So morphemes are just the smallest unit of meaning. Words are not necessarily the smallest unit of meaning. Which is weird because like when we're growing up we always think of a word as like, that's like the basic unit of language. But once you get into linguistics you realize that words can be divided further. Kind of like when you're growing up you think an atom is the basic unit of matter. And then once you learn more about physics you can go a bit deeper than that, right? Yes. Yes. Analogies! A word can be a morpheme. Wait, hold on. A morpheme can be a word, but a word can't always be a morpheme. Not always, yes. And a morpheme can't always be a word. Okay, so that was stupid to say. Continue. No, I no, I love that you're trying to think about this because most people don't think about this at all. They're like, oh, linguistics, what is this bullshit? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> at least you're engaging with the material. I'm trying to learn. I know what I love that about you, Ashley. <laughs> okay, continue, continue. Yeah, so...